Muy bien, muy buenos días. Continuamos en Habitual TV, en este ciclo de entrevistas. Hoy la verdad es que tenemos una visita muy especial, muy importante. Nos visita Mark Lainas, este, una especie de converso, una persona que trabajaba por el ambientalismo, que trabajaba en contra de los organismos genéticamente modificados durante muchos años y que un día esto cambió. Mark, ¿cómo, cómo fue esto? ¿Cómo, ¿En qué momento vos empezás a trabajar a favor del ambiente, o sea, a defender el medio ambiente? ¿Por qué empezaste? ¿Y cuándo sentiste que eh, algo no andaba bien? Bueno, well, one thing that hasn't changed is that I'm still an environmentalist. Um, so I'm still a passionate believer in the need to protect the planet and to protect the Earth's ecology. Uh, what changed for me was my understanding of the science of GMOs. So, um, and that was a long-term process. It didn't just happen one day that I woke up and I realized I got this wrong. Um, it happened really because I was writing books about climate change. So when I was an anti-GMO activist, I had no understanding of the science. I didn't read any scientific materials. Um, I, but then I wanted to be, to be a scientific writer. So I was writing books about climate change um, and, and reading scientific material. And of course, the scientific community is very clear that climate change is real. And I think we have to listen to the voice of the experts. But then when it, when it, when it comes to uh, GMOs, the experts, the same scientific community is very clear that this is a safe technology which can be very useful environmentally. So how could I then continue to deny that as a scientifically literate environmentalist? So I had to change my position in order to be consistent with what the scientists were saying. ¿Y por qué crees que eh, hay una, una resistencia tan grande contra los organismos genéticamente modificados? Sí, la, es, es real lo que vos decís. O sea, eh, eh, científicamente no hay, no hay ninguna evidencia que diga que hay algún problema, sino generalmente todo lo contrario, porque baja la cantidad de agroquímicos aplicados, etcétera, etcétera. ¿Qué es lo que quiere? ¿Es un tema ideológico? I think it was a mixture of things. Part of it was the idea that this would give corporations more power and big corporations like Monsanto. Monsanto became this big symbol for everything that's bad about agriculture in people's <laughs> heads, right? It's not so much in reality, but in people's heads. And the idea was also that the genetic modification, because it would potentially be transferring genes between the fish and the strawberry, these are urban myths, but this is what people were thinking, that it would be creating some kind of Franken, you know, Fra the Franken thing, the Frankenstein's monster. This is a, yeah, this is a cultural um, fear that humans have had for, for centuries, actually, that we could create some awful monster through the use of our technology in an inappropriate way. Um, Uh, and also the issues about industrial agriculture, about monoculture, the use of agrochemicals. And so from the very beginning, because of herbicide tolerant crops, um, the GMO issue was linked with increased chemical use in people's minds. Uh, and chemicals was just a single category. There's no distinction between uh, a toxic insecticide and a benign herbicide exactly. like glyphosate. Uh, and so it's, it's, an, it's a complex mixture of things, but this became kind of a perfect storm, uh, environmentally speaking, and the whole movement gravitated towards being anti-GMO. Um, and it, it became a huge issue, and it totally changed the world. This was the most successful environmental campaign, so-called environmental campaign, I was ever involved in. It's, we've succeeded in banning biotechnology in most of the regions of the world in an enormous permanent sense. Uh, unfortunately, this, was, this has created, a, 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 I think, done a lot of damage to the environment and actually done a lot of damage to people's livelihoods in developing countries. So that's why now I'm, I'm very much involved in trying to turn that situation around. Por otro lado, este, vos decís eh, que arrancaste o que venías con el tema del cambio climático. Eh, y esto generó, porque está muy buena y muy interesante la dicotomía entre cambio climático y todo lo que tiene que ver con organismos genéticamente modificados, en cómo los gobiernos o los políticos tomaron cartas en el asunto. En el caso particular de, del cambio climático, la presión social generó tal presión que el político tuvo que empezar a actuar uno puede cuestionar o no, pero se actuó. Y en el caso de los organismos genéticamente modificados, por lo menos en Europa también. Este, ¿A qué le atribuís esto? ¿A qué era tal la presión de la, de, la, de la gente que no había otra manera? ¿O a una casi responsabilidad de decir, bueno, escuchamos entonces? No, no porque, digo, no hay un Ministerio de Agricultura que, que diga, miren que esto no, no, no hay ninguna prueba científica. ¿Qué opinas vos de eso? Um, I think the scientific community has not been very successful in communicating um, its position on, the, on, on this issue. On climate change, it's a bit different, but this is, remember, this is a 
political issue. This isn't really a scientific issue. So for climate change, it tends to be the political right that's anti-climate change science. For, for GMOs, it tends to be the political left. So in fact, um, I've heard anti-GMO people called the climate skeptics of the left because their politics means that they take an ideologically um, biased anti-science approach to, to this particular issue. And again, it's not, it's not the reality of the issue that's at, at stake here. It's the symbolism of the issue. And so what GMOs, which actually isn't a meaningful category scientifically, by the way, there's no single thing of the GMOs. There's lots of different techniques and lots of different outputs. But anyway, that's become symbolic for people, for people on the left of corporate control. Climate change has become symbolic for people on the right of government control, and that's what they're against. And so you, you have to understand the politics which is informing these, these kinds of debates. It isn't something you can just say, well, the scientists are telling us these facts and win the argument on that basis because the arguments aren't about the facts, they're about ideologies and about contesting worldviews. Bien, bueno, Mark, la verdad te, te agradecemos mucho y mañana vamos a estar en Maizarco acompañándote en tu visitación. Muchas gracias. De nada.